Hi, and welcome to Traveling Marlins. I'm Gail. And I'm Mark. As uh, everybody's kind of starting to get ready to travel for their summer trips and everything, we wanted to go over things that hopefully will help anybody, uh, mainly safety type things. And what a lot of people don't really think of on safety is actually having a, a GPS set up for your RV, for your weight, your height, your width. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to show you the outcome of some guys, or maybe women, I don't know who was driving, but yeah. uh, of people who don't obviously set up their GPSs properly and or listen to them. Sometimes you do have to listen when it's yelling at you. Gail does the same thing in RV Trip Wizard. Uh, so if some of you are using RV Trip Wizard, that will help you do it. But you set up the same exact things because if you don't have the proper height, width, and everything, then it will take you down something you don't want to go down. So you need to um, check on it yourself. Have it weigh Have your vehicle weighed. Have the height checked. Everything and then put it in there and then you're going to be good to go from then on out. And then also we're going to talk about uh, tire pressure monitors, what we use and how. And I'm going to, we're going to link a, a link to a brochure, it's newer than this one, but it's an RV, a Michelin RV tire brochure and it will tell you how to weigh your vehicle, what you should do and shouldn't do. And uh, we'll go over that. And Gail will definitely Oh, and our, I think I'd set our tire pressure monitor, but mm -hmm. uh, we use Pressure Pro. We've used a number of different ones over the last 27 years, but we use Pressure Pro now, and I really like that, and we'll show you a quick view of that too. We would love for you to subscribe and when you do hit the bell and change it to the solid colored bell. What that does is give you notification when we put things in the community area. Otherwise you wouldn't know about it. So make sure you do that and we appreciate you very much. Okay, so here we are. I'm sitting in my driver's seat. And here's my GPS, and I will mention that mine has a camera built into it, a dash cam, which I think everybody needs one to help protect yourself from any kind of people doing dumb things. But here I just go to my vehicle symbol, and it will say that I'm using this for the motorhome. I can use it in the car, but it will also then tell me my... Uh, Vehicle, it's a motorhome pulling a trailer, which is my truck. But it shows us at 65 feet in length, 48,000 pounds. We're 8 feet wide, and we're 12 foot 11 tall. And that actually gives me a little bit of a buffer. Uh, so you need to make sure you have that set up for your particular vehicle. And make sure it's accurate. And also then go into your GPS and make sure you have the newest databases. Uh, people maybe don't view a GPS as a safety item, but it will keep you from going over or under bridges you can't go under or over ones you shouldn't. And even in the mountains, it'll give us grade warnings ahead of time to let us know if I need to start kind of getting ready to gear down or whatever. So check that. Make sure you're, you're good on that. And uh, do the same thing if you use an RV trip wizard, 
do the same thing in Trip Wizard and it will definitely save your bacon. And I was just going to show you right quick when I said you need to check your device status. I was going to show you where that is on these GPS's like this one. You will hit the little gear right here. So I'm going to hit that. It comes up with this screen. Just scroll up until it says about device. Tap that. The very top line right here it says system updates. You tap it. It's checking. And I'm up to date on the software and I'm up to date on the map. I'm going to show you where to make sure that you have the right settings in Trip Wizard if you use that program. Open your trip and then go to the trip tools right here. and etc. Click there and then you have your RV info and here's where you set your height, length, and weight as well as some other options that you can add. But that's very important to make sure that those settings are set and it's a good habit to do it when you make each trip in Trip Wizard. Okay, I'm in my driver's seat and right down here by my left knee is where I've got my Pressure Pro main little computer mounted. And that face will turn red or yellow if you have a slow leak or blowout or fast leak. But then I come up to my phone, which I have just on a little round mount on my dash. And I can go to Pressure Pro and it's already paired. And as you hear right there, it lost a signal to one of the tires and it'll do that occasionally it'll lose a signal but it shows all your tires and all your temperatures at the same time see mine are all my two front ones are a little high just due to the temperature they should be about 88 right now but it shows you all of it and then also it'll show you my type my truck as well and that, that's why I really like the pressure pro you see it all on one kind of screen and if you want to rotate, uh, you can rotate it to landscape and it'll still show the same thing. But I would recommend everybody have a pressure monitoring system, tire pressure monitoring system. It will save you in the long run. Another thing you're going to want, I'm going to stick around to the end for, is uh, if you have a blowout due to low tire pressure or anything like we're talking about, most people think you hit the brakes and that's the exact opposite of what you really do. You actually hit the accelerator. I know you don't think that's right, but I'm, we're going to link or uh, put a video in here also from Michelin that was from back, oh gosh, in the probably 70s, 80s, uh, but it's still taught today, still pertinent today, and it will show you uh, what you should do and what you need to keep in your head to do if you have a blowout. The real solution is stepping on the accelerator. Getting power to the drive wheels means maintaining control. The accelerator is your best answer when there is a force pulling the RV to the side. But wait a minute, you say. I don't want to go faster. I want to stop right now. I'm going for the brake and hard. When you do that, you may lose control of your RV. One of nature's basic laws says that an object going in one direction, such as an RV on a highway, will keep moving in that direction unless it is acted upon by a new force in a different direction. 
In our diagram, the size of the arrows approximate the magnitude and direction of these forces. A rapid air loss creates a new side force. Unless the driver compensates for this side force, the RV will move in a new direction. By stepping on the accelerator, the driver starts to compensate. I saw that bridge and, oh, this is fine. <laughs> Some call it the Golden Gate Bridge of Arkansas. It's impressive. The prized structure off Highway 187 caught attention over the weekend after this video was posted. It shows a 35-ton charter bus crossing the bridge, which you can see buckling. That bridge is located in North Carolina, and when it was first built, uh, I think they said about 75 to 100 years ago, it was 11 feet 8 inches. In two, uh, 2019, they raised it, and now it's 12 feet 4 inches. And there's all kind of warning signs before you get to that bridge, and then there's also a sensor that senses how tall you are right before you get to the bridge, and that makes a huge LED, <clears throat> excuse me, sign light up and blink to also give you forewarning to not go under that bridge. And the video you saw with the bus going across the bridge and bending the bridge, that's in Arkansas, clearly marked within about, I mean, I, I say about 10 to 15 miles out, they give you multiple, multiple, multiple warnings about this 10,000 pound bridge. So that's a five ton limit. Our bus is almost 10 times that. So that bus that went across that was probably up in that range. You don't want to do that. Uh, you might go swimming if you do it, so. Or worse. Or worse. Yeah. Just. Just be prepared. Follow your GPS. Sometimes it may take you a little bit longer, but there's a gentleman on another video that we watch a lot of blog, uh, Keep Your Daydream, Mark Leach, says, fastest, expensive, slow is cheap and easy. We and love that saying. And so you kind yeah. of take it slower on some of these things and don't go rushing around and you won't have a problem. And I was going to tell you, all like on our, G, our GPS being set up and things, that's on my checklist up front that I set up and check it the day, actually the night before we roll, so I don't have to worry about it in the morning. That's just one less thing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the bridge, it's in North Carolina. They call that the can opener. <laughs> I think that's a great name. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Hope you enjoy it. Bye. Bye.